What up, Wade here. So today what I got for you is my number one tool for work-life balance. This video, it's from The Vault, it's from 2013. And what I see too often with people is if you wanna hit a high level in any area of your life, you know you're gonna have to immerse yourself. You gotta dive in that path to mastery. But what happens is too often, the other areas of your life, you neglect them, they start falling off the health falls off, or your relationships fall off, whether it's you're going for your work or whatever it is. And so what this tool is, I call it immersion and maintenance. And since releasing this video five years ago, I've seen it again and again work with clients. And so what I wanna do is first give you the video and then afterwards make sure to stick around because I'm gonna give some updates on how to use it even better. And so if you want more work-life balance, killing it in whatever that number one priority is without letting everything else fall through the cracks, Stick around, as always, enjoy. It's good to get out of the house a little bit because I haven't been outside uh, probably in four or five days other than to go to the gym twice. And I've just been stuck in my apartment working nonstop, just sitting there on my computer. And if you look at my schedule, you can see it's like, oh, two hours to read, two hours to go to the gym, and everything's just structured out. I got my coaching calls, lifestyle stuff, brainstorming the new lifestyle product. It's just endless, it's endless work, 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 work. And if I think about that compared to how my lifestyle was, let's say two, three years ago, I was going out 300 nights a year, just hitting it up. And now maybe I go out once a week or something. And yet, let me tell you, I'm happier than I've ever been. Oh no, but what does that mean? Does it mean I'm giving up on the game? Does it mean I regret all those years of going out? What does it mean? Come on, man, you gotta think about the bigger picture. This is about cycles of immersion and maintenance. So first off, the immersion thing. What do, what do I mean by immersion? I think this is something that everyone is familiar with here. If you're used to the book, The Mastery, and trying to like really dive into something, you gotta fully dive in with passion, hit it as hard as you can, and you're excited, you're like, this is what I'm gonna do, and I'm fully, I'm dreaming about it, I'm thinking about it. Think about uh, Think and Grow Rich, the book by Napoleon Hill, and what he talks about there, he's got the quote about just that, that burning desire, that pulsating desire, and how you just fully have to maximize that and, and run with it and roll with it. And I think that's awesome. I've done that multiple times. For me, the first time I did that was probably when I played the piano. So for me, playing the piano, why did that happen? Basically what it was is I went out to college on the other side of the country because I didn't know anyone. Instead of trying to make friends because I was all shy, I just ran to the practice rooms and played, played the piano in little practice rooms. And I got really damn good at it. And then as I decided to master my dating life and go that route, I use the same philosophy of immersion there, fully diving into that, of course getting to the point where I got good enough to become an instructor, which means I was pretty damn good. And then, uh, you know, I had that period, it was great, and now I've done it again, basically in my business life, fully immersing myself in it, right? And I think immersion, is, it's awesome. It's a really good place to be. But the issue that guys have then is they think, well, what about the other areas of my life? And they're like, oh, what do I do? So the big thing you gotta realize is this is immersion and maintenance. Not immersion and abandonment. Because what happens is a lot of times, guys, they're immersing themselves in one thing and they see all that it takes to get really good at that. And then they see, let's say, all of a sudden they're going out all the time and they think about, well, you know what? I really want to get uh, lean and tone. Get re look really good in the gym, you know, from going to the gym and everything. But they think about how much effort it's taking for them to go out at night and work on that skill set. And then when they think about the gym, they're like, I don't have time for both of these, including everything else in my life. So you know what, I'm, I'm frustrated, ah, fuck it. And they just throw it off and they, they just abandon it. So what you need to do is change how you view that and realize right now you're gonna immerse yourself in one thing and then you just put the rest in maintenance mode. What do I mean by maintenance mode? I mean, instead of going to the gym four to five times a week, fasting for 18 hours and getting super lean, trying to get the six pack, you, you dial that back to maybe once or twice a week and you, know, you keep your, your diet in check 80, 90% of the time and yeah, you're gonna deteriorate a little bit, your strength's probably gonna go down, your physique is not gonna be as good, and you're definitely not gonna be growing because you're not immersing yourself in it. But you can't feel guilty about that because you're growing in this other area that you're immersing yourself in. The same thing in business. If you you go gangbusters into business, hit that shit up 16, 18 hours a day, work nonstop. But if you're not and you wanna focus again on going out or something else, then try to delegate, try to outsource, try to automate as much as possible, and then you know, focus in on what you want to. Of course, again, with your business, it's not like you can just turn it off and delegate the whole thing to someone. It's impossible to do that. But that's why it's, it's maintenance mode, where you just try to do the bare minimum to kind of maintain things, but it's gonna be really hard. It's almost gonna be impossible to scale and grow in that, in that sort of, uh, when you're immersing yourself somewhere else. If I think for myself, when did, when did I really come up with this? This is actually a pretty recent thing for me. 
I was in Las Vegas this year and going out at night till eight in the morning, waking up at 3 p.m. And when I wake up, my head is in no way in a productive headspace. I'm not thinking at all about, ooh, how can I scale my business? Or how can I work on this marketing strategy? All I'm thinking about is, how do I get that pitcher of blueberry mojitos so I can head back to the pool and enjoy that? And what I, what I did is, knowing that going into it, I had everything planned beforehand of how I was gonna deal with things. How could I keep them in maintenance mode? So for the gym, I hit it really hard beforehand. And I also planned ahead having my food handled and everything, so when I'm there in Vegas, I don't have to worry about that stuff because I know I'm immersing myself in the whole going out sort of culture. And I know in the business side of things, I had a lot of my things scheduled. So the meetings I had and stuff, I scheduled them either really late in the afternoon and pretty sporadic, or I just put them back after the period's up. So this is what cycling is all about. This is the other side of it. It's, it's almost impossible to really hit a high level and be, and be rocking and immersing yourself in, in multiple things at once. So what you do is you cycle them. So it's a hypothetical situation. Let's say, what do we got here? Let's say, starting off, first quarter of the year, I'm gonna decide, this, this quarter for me, inspiration I have right now is to travel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel, I'm gonna hit it really hard, go around, meet new people, see different cultures, really immerse myself in that, really enjoy the different cultures and enjoy that experience, and put my business in maintenance mode. So hopefully I can just answer a couple emails, work it that way, delegate a lot of things and have it running smoothly that way. Or just get my finances handled so I don't have to worry about that as much. And also with the gym, I know it's gonna be pretty expensive to uh, go to the gym, you know, it's 30 bucks a day if I'm going, so there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to go three, four times a week if I'm traveling. It's just, it's just not possible usually. But that's cool, that's my first quarter. I don't feel guilty about those other areas. Second quarter, let's see what would be fun. Let's go to Thailand and let's get a little hut with some Wi-Fi and work like 16 hours a day. You can look out at your little beach and you're just working nonstop. You know, maybe go out once or twice, but maybe get a girlfriend even and enjoy that and that's a lot of fun. And I don't feel, again, I don't feel guilty about not going out or I don't feel guilty about working out because this is my primary focus now and I know my life is in cycles of immersion and maintenance. So I'm maintaining everything else, have my aspect of immersion and cycling, cycling again. So if you've never immersed yourself in something before, find an area that you're passionate about, something you're enthusiastic about. You know that's gonna be your highest leverage point. That's your brain unconsciously just knows that that's how you're gonna move the most and kind of make the most happen. Jump right in and enjoy it. Maintain the rest of your life, put it in maintenance mode. If you're in a period of immersion and you're kind of abandoning some other areas, bring those back, but only on a level that you can need them to maintain. And never feel guilty about the fact that they are in maintenance mode and maybe deteriorating a little bit, knowing that life is about cycles. The other thing about if you are in a period of immersion is to really be aware and really be clear on what your purpose is, why you're doing what you're doing. I think what happens, guys, fall so immersed into something that all of a sudden they forget about why they're even there. And then they get all the stress and everything there. You need to really tie it into what that foundation, the foundation comes from, this is why I want to do it. For me, why do I want the business success? I want the self-esteem that comes from it. I want the notoriety that comes from it. I, I, like I've done it before and I want to prove to myself again. I like the competition with my friends. And tying all those things is have those all stacked on top of each other. So then in those periods of stress, you're like, oh, this is why I'm doing it. And for me, when I do the one-on-one the -on -one coaching calls with the lifestyle guys, it, this, is the, this is usually the biggest revelation they have. Because there's always confusion and a lack, of, a lack of focus of like, which direction should I go? I'm trying to master all these different things. And when you get clear on what your purpose is, you get clear on what your outcome is, all of a sudden it all, becomes, it all comes into focus. And uh, a lot of that confusion goes away. And you're just way more effective. And that's how you really reach your potential. Hopefully that helps you out again. Immersion and balance and maintenance and doing it in cycles. As always, have a great weekend, enjoy. All right, so hopefully you liked the video. And so the concept of immersion and maintenance, it hasn't changed much since the beginning, but there are a couple tips and tricks that have really helped out as I've gone through the years of working with clients. First, when it comes to maintenance mode, what you wanna do is look at it like a rubber band. And so start off with what you think the bare minimum could be for you to feel like, yes, I'm moving ahead at the bare minimum in this area of my life. I'm not neglecting it. So an example, one client, he was focused on his business. He's really immersed in there. And he's like, I'm gonna do this for a year or two, but I don't wanna lose a social life or anything like that. So I said, okay, what's the bare minimum? And what we came up with was just going out once a month and having a trip with his friends once a quarter, so four times a year. And so I'm like, okay, this is very minimal, but let's start there. And after the first quarter of the year, if you feel like that's not enough, 
then you can kind of ratchet it up a little bit and move it towards the maintenance mode. So there's definitely like a give or take. You never know what maintenance mode really is. Another example, I had a client who was on the road, his business was doing really well and he was trying to just travel a lot. And so he was worried about the business and also his health. I said, okay, let's start off. Well, I kind of had him decide this for himself, but it, what we came to was once a week going to the gym because it's kind of expensive to go to the gym like I talked about in the video. And that alone, okay, was once a week, just go in, do some bicep curls, do something to check it off the list. You keep your body, the blood flowing a little bit there. Is that enough? And then after a month or two, see how you feel. The same thing with him with his work is, okay, what's the bare minimum to keep the business going so that it doesn't deteriorate? But again, his primary focus was self-development and self-growth and just traveling and experiencing and building that wisdom up. And so again, through that feedback, you can evolve over time to really find that proper work-life balance. Another thing I skimmed over in the video because it wasn't really fleshed out at the time was the aspect of looking at your life quarterly. And so you can't do everything in a day. You can't have that proper work-life balance in a day. But when you have immersion and maintenance, it allows you to say, okay, you know, what do I think about for my family? What do I think about for my social circle? And how can I schedule this out in the future? The difference with most people is they live life reactively and things just come to them and they try to squeeze all this stuff on their to-do list and they never get to all of it. Instead, thinking strategically, thinking proactively and knowing that every quarter things are gonna change, things are gonna evolve. And so when I work with clients, we start off with six months, some I've been with for three, four, or five years at this point. And so every three months, I know that something in their life is gonna change. Something in my life is gonna change. Maybe they break up with their girlfriend. Maybe they get more serious with their girlfriend. Maybe they have a huge windfall in their business. Maybe they lose an employee. And so a lot of times the number one thing doesn't change. So let's say, okay, business is number one, but two or three, all of a sudden you have a health scare and that shoots up to number two or number one. And that happens literally every three to four months, something is always gonna be changing. And so you think about things accordingly and you go, okay, next quarter, what am I gonna focus on? This quarter, I'm really gonna immerse in business. I'm really gonna immerse in going out and getting my social skills handled or figuring out my dating life or going to the gym consistently and knowing that all I'm gonna be thinking about is going to the gym and it might hold you back from you know, building the business or you know, getting ahead in your career. But the most important thing to know is that balance comes on a more meta scale. It comes more long-term of looking at annually. When you look back at the year, is there balance there versus like in a day or versus in a week even, or even versus in a quarter. And so using that quarterly immersion maintenance sort of rebalance is really important. And the final thing I'll add is something that is a theme in a lot of my client calls. And it's really just another way of saying the same thing is that the only way you can fail is by staying in the gray zone. And so the only way you can fail is when you're going and you're working and you're thinking about your social life and you're feeling guilty about your social life because you're not doing enough. And then when you're all socializing, you're feeling guilty about your work and you're staying in that gray zone. You wanna be linear, black and white, sequential, like I talked about. Immerse yourself, commit to a quarter, go, one, go all in, go 100% and do that. And then at the end of the quarter or at the end of the week or at the end of the month, you can look back and say, okay, was that enough? Where was that rubber band? Was it stretching too thin? All right, it was. You can learn from that and then move ahead versus just staying in that sort of reactive mode and always feeling guilty and always neglecting things and things just falling off and you're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. When you get strategic, when you get proactive, that's what makes it feel like you're running on all cylinders. For me, fulfillment comes when you're growing in every area of your life. You can't do it in a day, but using the concept of immersion and maintenance, you really can. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, enjoy.